that. Oh, I didn't make it very big. <laughs> ah. Okay, why well, do I care what the peasant have to say? <laughs> Square Enix presents at TGS 2020. Yeah, I think Yoshi P is doing his Yoshi P show. <clears throat> They're playing the card game. It looks. Oh yeah, I think they're doing the T G S thing first. T there, T C G T G S. Oh yeah, that's very live. Right there. <clears throat> Where's the tweet and the Discord message? Uh, I wasn't going to. <laughs> Not actually showing up on Discord either. <clears throat> oh, that you're streaming? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's hard. Fuck a badger went live. Hmm. Oh, you are streaming. No, oh, it worked. Everything yeah. looks like it works now. Holy shit. Wait, who's actually watching this? What the crap? No one, probably. No one, yeah. <laughs> Is it just us three that are looking at your Twitch? <clears throat> Alright, so. Then. It's like I gotta change to your character. Wait, why why is Sako and you still shitty squares? Because I didn't change it. <clears throat> so Oh, there we go. Turn order. Comrades and zero. <laughs> now, if you guys click the initiative thing, you should be able to get into the turn order on your character sheet. It's under journal. Oh, what the chat channel. Oh, <clears throat> in oh, interesting. I didn't know when I, I didn't realize when I switched between uh, who I'm sending text as, oh, my icon changes. Uh, yeah. Before you click the thing, let me. Sarah already clicked it. Yeah. You guys should be able to click it and it should update now. Okay. So just I'm click just... initiative, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll just click it again. Uh. Oh, sorry, I forgot to click me. Oh, I forgot to click me. <sighs> it's so complicated. <laughs> Wait, so how does it work? You have to click on yourself and then hit click your token. Click your token and then click initiate. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wait, I had a much better number the first time. <laughs> I got the same number. Wait, I went up like three times. <laughs> oh, fuck off, zero. Yeah, for some reason, it doesn't adjust the initiatives, which is annoying. So I guess I need to manually adjust it. <laughs> Why am I so this. bad at this game? <laughs> <laughs> Entirely possible, though. That's a pro feature. Oh boy, look at that! <laughs> no, I'm better than Vera. Least. <laughs> Everybody has an initiative except Vera. So. <clears throat> I remember getting your perceptions last time, and Zero was the only one who noticed things. Oh, my numbers! You noticed oh, go on. three people with weapons drawn, looking like they're gonna kill your asses. 
So, Zero, what would you like to do? Again, I'd like to shoot a fireboat. All right, so you can roll the hit. Okay. I need to actually roll my perception, don't I? Sorry, I hit a 19. Oh, uh, yeah. The 19 will definitely hit. Uh, which one are you shooting at? You can see three of them. Two of them, the one to the left and the right, are wearing leather armor. And then the one that's actually hidden behind the wall over here is wearing a chain shirt. And a bandana. Unacceptable. I'll hit the guy with the bandana. All right. Uh, <laughs> so you hit. So roll the d10 damage. for damage. All right. Rolling may be able to. Hold on a sec. Okay. Just, just hit D10, right? Yep. Yep. Until four points of damage to him. All right. So that's Zero's turn. And it's this bandit's turn. <laughs> What's this plus four to attack I have? Uh... The plus four to your attack is from two from your proficiency and then two from your charisma modifier. Okay, so does that apply my, to my damage at all? Or only it does two? not. Okay. Is there anything that improves my damage or just the D10? Um, there's magic items that will improve it. Okay. Uh, right. As you get up in levels, every, five, uh, every fifth level you will also increase it by another die, so it'll be uh, 2D10. Okay. Right. And then at level 11, I'll, I think level 11, you'll be 3d10. Okay. So anyways, yeah, I inform my party there's people around and shoot a fireball at that particular clown to the south. Yep. <clears throat> she hit and you do some damage and it's their turn to retaliate because of the initiatives I had rolled earlier. I refuse to accept any advice from Zero unless I see it written in character. Well, it's not written. It's spoken in character, right? Oh, well, I want to see it in the channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I oh, think Zero is messed up in the head, and he's shooting fireballs when he should be in bed. <laughs> she have that one stopped. Zero, I rolled a fourteen to hit you. Does that hit? <clears throat> Hold on, is your name... <laughs> is your character's, character's name Zero, zero too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, which one? Send... Type, do your thing, type as your character. I am. That is my character. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> oh, I thought you had a last name. Oh, no, shit. No, no. Oh, wait, no. Uh, Zero <laughs> Raven is his username. Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Zero, was, Zero creating his character was like, he's the most noble above everyone guy I know. <laughs> Does 14 hit your AC? I'm trying to meet or exceed. Uh, who are you attacking, me? You. Uh, my AC is 15. All right. So since this bandit over here missed with his crossbow, he's actually going to drop it, pull out his scimitar, and move up to you. Okay. This bandit over here is going to roll. <clears throat> Power Ash, there appears to be a bandit behind the tent. That is a 16 to hit. Paris. Nani. <laughs> what is your armor class, sir? Uh, 13. All right. So being caught unaware, you take a crossbow bolt to your chest, taking... Oh. <laughs> Four points of piercing damage. I, wait, uh, I don't even know how much HP I have. Uh, it should oh, be no, I see, your... I see, I see. Yeah. So, I'm already minus four? Yep. 
Where's HP? Uh, it's right under your armor class. Oh, I'm I have seven hit. Okay, Ben. Yeah. Play. Yeah, I also have seven. So this guy doesn't actually have a weapon. Uh, has a weapon out, so he's gonna move up. Six, not quite close enough in range, so he'll take two actions and move up there. So a combat round. Uh, so when it's your turn in combat, in essence, how it's gonna work is gonna be you're able to move up to your speed. Um, your speed is in feet, and each one of these squares is five feet. So most of you have a speed of thirty, so you can move up to six squares. Okay. Um, then you uh, can take perspective of terrain. Yes. Um, if there's difficult terrain, it'll be halved, or it'll cost you 10 feet to go through. Um, and that's about it. Uh, and then you can, you're going to be able to take an action and a bonus action, and one item interaction. Generally, most things uh, that you're going to want to do in a combat take an action. Um, very specific things will take bonus actions. Uh, which you'll be able to do based on your class. Um, like, eventually you'll get Bardic Inspiration, which you can use as a bonus action, Harris. Uh, and then an item interaction is like pulling out a weapon, putting away something, um, but you can basically do it once. So usually pulling out your, your sword and then hitting them is uh, moving up to a guy, pulling out your sword and then hitting them is an action. Or is like a turn. Okay. Uh, and then we'll get into more specific details later um, about other abilities, but I don't want to overload you with that stuff. So yeah, uh, Eris, it is your turn. Hmm. <clears throat> Um, I think no. I think we tried this last time. It didn't work. What is that spell book on? Oh. If you click on the, you should be able to click on the bottom bandit over there, Ares. Yeah. And it should have the three circles like it does on yours. No. Mm, okay. Then I'll need to figure that one out later. Yeah, but I can't click on enemies. Yeah. Oh, it's because I said, right, I don't have you guys allowed to control them. So, Eris, what would you like to do? Uh, Dude, why is there an arrow in me? The fuck, sir, why'd you pick a fight with that tree? <laughs> I shot the arrow at you. <laughs> uh, it's actually not an arrow, it's a crossbow bolt. <clears throat> I don't know. That would, have, that would have made the first too long. <laughs> um, let me see. What can I even do? I'm, I'm like, I, I'm looking at stuff in my spells. Your spells, you can look at your weapons. Uh, you may, uh, you're too low level to really have any abilities. No, you uh, idiot, just uh, banned it. What's, what's the difference between a... Wait, what's a cantrip? Uh, cantrips are, um, very, very weak spells that you can cast over and over. Okay. So that they have, like, no cost or something? Yeah. So if you go to your spells list, you notice that you have two uh, first-level spell slots. That means you can only ever cast two of any of those spells in a given day. Wait, so but you can cast again? the same spell multiple times if you want. Um, if you go to your spells page, it's yeah. uh, you'll, you have a number of spell slots um, right. based on whatever level you have. You can only ever cast two of those, uh, uh, the number of spells equal to the spell slots, but you can cast them any number of times up to that number. So you have like three or four spells known. If you wanted, you can cast the same spell, uh, in this case twice, two different spells, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Okay, and that's per day? Yes, it's per day. And so I have four things here, so that means I can cast two of them today, and then tomorrow, I, let's say, I could cast the other two? Yes, or the same two, if you want. Okay. Or the same one spell four times. <laughs> Fine, I wanna, I want, I'd like to use my Vicious Mockery Cantrip on sure. Bandit with the bandana. <sighs> That the one that shot me? Nope, it's the one that's to your north that oh. shot you. I mean, I but see them now. firing is not a bad thing. So and do I see them now? At least. Yes. Yes, you do. Mm. That's a... I rolled a ten on my save. What is your save DC? My save, DC? Yes. Where am I finding that? Let's look at character sheet real quick. I mean, what... what uh... Uh, it's not under that. Oh. Oh. That's, I didn't know it expanded that much. Yeah. Um, it's under, actually, under your attacks and spellcasting. On the, your core page. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, wait. Yeah, you can just click it like that. And it'll pull up. Oh, so I should have just clicked the little attack button? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. So, he fails, because I rolled a 10. Uh, okay. So he'll take a point of psychic damage. That's wrong. It, ad it adds, really? But oh, this bandit looks like the ugliest one in town. I bet this man pees while sitting down. Jeez. <laughs> There's yeah. only one damage, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> I've just been <laughs> shot by the way. <laughs> you like to do anything else? Like move away, stay there, hide? That's up to you. Yeah, can I run into the tent? <laughs> the tent sure. was not set up. <laughs> the tent was fire. mostly set up, so it's a little bit uh, difficult to hide in. <clears throat> if you oh. duck and roll, maybe you can <laughs> get under it. Make gonna... a dexterity, uh, an acrobatics check. That's under your skills. <laughs> That's... Oh. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> um. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you can... Uh, so you run over and duck in and try to get some cover. You manage to hide yourself a little bit. A little bit. Excellent. <clears throat> My turn. Right. It is Robla's turn. So just to check that I'm doing my math rate. Right. One, two, ten, fifteen. So it's like so one, two, three, four. One, two, three. That's a fifteen. Is that a fifteen foot square? Because it's five, five, three squares each way. No, so it'll either say radius or it's just going to be, uh, like for that one, it's just going to be, oh, uh, that's also seven squares on each side. <clears throat> well, oh, like it should be free counting where I am. Yeah, so it'd be like these three right here. Oh, wait, draw. Because it says 15 foot cube. Yeah, it'd actually be like that. Oh, okay, so it's like a nine square cube. All right, yeah. that's useful. All right. It's very useful. Well, not right now. <laughs> uh, you, you can hit both of your friends and the enemy. That's a circus of value. This <laughs> <clears throat> um, is relative. One second.
Are you calculating it? I'm just checking spells. <clears throat> I was hoping to do something cooler, but it's fine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> You're low level, you don't get to do a lot of cool things yet. I would like to cast magic missiles on Bandit 1. Sure, you're going to send them all with Bandit 1? You can split, split them up yeah. if you want. No, I would like to focus on Bandit 1. Okay, so roll 3d4 plus, two, uh, plus 3. Roll 3d4 plus 3. 15 points of damage. Uh, yeah. So those, all three of them impact the bandit, and <laughs> he drops like a sack of potatoes. Alright. So your little dwarf friend over here is, sees that this guy's been hit a few times. And I close the <clears throat> I added a comment. Well, pull out his battle axe and try to take a swing at this guy. And that's a critical hit. Hey. <clears throat> So critical hits, you double the number of dice, uh, but you add the okay. same amount of flat damage. So in this case, since I hit him with the battle axe, I'd roll 2d8, and I'd add 2. Nice. And that guy dies. That was very unfortunate. And as his bonus action, since he has a bonus action... He is going to send a healing word over to Eris and heal you for three plus, uh, I think, another, yeah, another five points. So you're going to heal for six points of healing, Eris. Oh, sweet. It can't, right? it can't go above my maximum, though, right? He cannot go above your maximum. And he will go to intercept this bandit over here. And it's back to Zero's turn. I am going to cast Ray of Fuss at the last remaining bandit. Sure. The 14? Mm, 14's kind of low. But he doesn't have a shield on, so that'll hit. <laughs> uh, gonna roll 1d8 for damage? Yep. And he's slowed. You have five points of damage to him. <laughs> uh, would you like to do anything else, Zero? Yes, I like to kick the bear on my tent. <laughs> uh, that's not going to really work very well because the dragon is much bigger than you. I'd like, I'd like to see him try. <laughs> Let him attempt it. I want to see how this works. <laughs> I'm going to try to push him on my tent. Like so. All right. I want to say that I want to see Zero statistically fail. Oh, pushing him out of the tent's going to take an action, so you can do that next turn. Uh, this bandit, having seen both his leader and his friend over there drop, is actually going to run away, but he's not going to get very far because as soon as he steps here, he gets attacked because he's turned his back on an enemy. Oh. And ooh, isn't he also slow? Because of cold. He sure is. And but he drops. Also, I hurt his pride. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so he hurt the other guy's pride. <clears throat> Wait, 
Which one's the one that shot the, uh, Belras with the boat? Uh, the one that tried to run away. Uh. You have succeeded in your first combat. Congratulations! <laughs> it almost died. <laughs> <laughs> Venturing is dangerous, man. Don't get shot. I try to win them. You sure did. So, from from an RP perspective, if you if you've healed me, is I just like, uh, like the like the the like crossbow bolts out of my body now too and all. Uh, yeah, it kind of like. Shoves it out and stitches the wound back up. Okay. <laughs> Why is it We're not going with there? the grim realize uh grim realism <clears throat> of the wound heals around the crossbow bolt, so you need to pull no, it out. I don't know. I just like... so. <laughs> there are games like that though. Hmm. So everyone can see that properly. So, let's go with this small thing <clears throat> that I had prepared. So you guys have been hired by a traveling caravan, or a, a merchant, to escort some supplies to a small tavern uh, along the Sword Coast. Uh, it's about... Cool. It's about six days of travel, um, and it's mostly supplies like salt, pepper, <clears throat> spices, things that are hard to procure out in the wilderness. Um, as payment, you have each been promised ten gold pieces. Oh. Uh, and promise of more have, work. And I'll have 85 gold pieces. What the hell? You have so much. I told, I told you I'm rich. Ugh. Don't worry, I plan to waste them on scholarly artifacts to save my stupid curiosity. So you've been <clears throat> told to go down south along the Sword Coast, and then uh, at one of the roads where it turns off, which you've been kind of told around the area that you uh, need to go, you're going to be make, uh, turning east. <clears throat> uh, the first... Two days are very uneventful, mostly because there's a lot of travelers going through this area, because Waterdeep is a very large city, and is the area outside, uh, immediately outside, is very well, um, well maintained. But around the third day, the road starts getting a little bit less maintained, and people are a little bit less friendly to you as they go around. You realize that people are starting to pay a little bit more attention out on the roads to make sure that they're not attacked by beasts or whatnot. Uh, but you also manage to find the turn that you uh, that you were told to take, and you start heading east in uh, inland. <clears throat> Nothing. Nothing really sticks out as entertaining through the thought process other than Zero being highly um, distaste, uh, having high disdain for probably all three of the rest of the party. <laughs> uh, but the rest of the time kind of passes uneventfully, and your destination slowly comes into view. I didn't know you were a dishonorable type. <laughs> I'm oh. willing to try anything. <laughs> oh, even, even a life of crime. <laughs> what, my my character is a inquisitive, <clears throat> curious researcher who is willing to try anything. What disgrace to your bloodline. <clears throat> Just think of all the uses we could do with salt. <clears throat> yeah, I can make things salty. <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys should see the oh, there we are. new map and where you're located. 
Uh, Iris is a little bit south of your screen. Oh, I now. lost my numbers again. Oh, there it is. There you go. Seven, twelve, thirteen. Um, and as you guys get here, the you immediately notice something's off. How about you all give me some perception checks? Perception. Oops, I need to click on myself okay. first. You should just be. Uh, you should be able to just press it on your character sheet. Oh, the skill oh, perception. I already, already did. The the perception that's in skills, not the passive yes. one. Yes, the perception that's in skills. I'll ask for your passive perception sometimes, but uh, that, that is not what we're doing right now. Okay. So let's see. Everyone notices. Wow, everyone does notice. So as you guys are moving up, both of you spot. Can't edit it here. Hold on, sorry. What is that? Is that a gobby? But you'd notice a pair of goblins. Uh, they don't look like they've noticed you yet. They kind of have been... You can kind of tell from how far away you are that they're just kind of not interested in doing whatever they're supposed to be doing, and from where you're situated, it's probably supposed to be guarding things. So, I'm going to give you guys what's called a surprise round. I gotta clear this out first. But everyone should roll some initiatives. Well, I think you're getting that I need to add turn before you guys roll. I think your character is a sociopath. <laughs> like Zero might be racist, but at least he's presumably ethical. Uh which one are you rolling in a stuff? Yep. <clears throat> Bowser, what the heck? <laughs> He's too busy thinking about how better he is. <clears throat> oh wait, the goblin hand has to be mummified. How do I mummify a goblin hand? <clears throat> The goblins were first, but they didn't notice you yet. So it's Robla's turn, actually, first. <clears throat> nice. Uh... Are goblins reliably, like, bad guys? Yes. Why not my spell range? <clears throat> Maybe I should write these down. They're oh. written down under the spell itself. The only good goblin is one uh, that they... never comes out of its stinking cave. Pretty much. So if oh. you go to your spell page, um, the your third page over there, right underneath uh, your experience point portion, uh, oh. you can click on oh, the thing. The tab. Yeah. Fireball. You can click on the little eye, or the eye there. Oh, okay, the okay. Range. That's a lot more useful. I've been looking at the book. Yeah. 120 feet, it says, well, that's far, actually. Yeah, that's, uh, very far. <clears throat> uh, from where you guys are, you also hear, um, 
the sound of goblin laughter coming from inside the tavern. You're not sure how many goblin are. tavern. Hey, this isn't the tavern that we're supposed to be delivering things to, is it? It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so one, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, Wait, how does diagonal work? Uh, it's just five feet. But do I move diagonally? Like yeah, when I can. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So, Dungeons Dragons 5th yeah. edition removed a lot of the, like, crunchiness of older editions where the first diagonal was five feet and the second diagonal would be ten feet. That's kind of why I brought you into this one. Okay, so the goblin on the left is about 70 feet away from me. And I assume the goblin on the right is about the same. <clears throat> uh, I would like to call... About 50, actually. Uh, the left one, yeah, is about 70. Yeah. The other one's about 50. Oh, yeah, because I can just count more diagonals, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will cast my trusty magic missile again at the goblin sure. on the left. Okay. So, so, same thing? All three at one guy? Yep. Yeah. Alright, so roll 3d4 plus 3. <clears throat> oh, not as good this time. So, the three missiles impact into the goblin, and before he can even react to them, he falls to the ground, a lifeless heap. Uh, what is the condition of the body? Can I take the hand? Um, I'll walk up missiles... to it and cut it off. So you're gonna move up. Oh yeah, how far can I move after I've attacked? Uh, you can move up to your speed, and each square is five feet, so you can move six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> okay. So this guy. Ten. 25, move here. You can see this goblin over here, but he can't actually hit him with his battle axe, so he's going to pull out a hand axe and throw that. Oh, if, cool. I, if I have a hand axe. <laughs> uh, he sure doesn't, because I forgot to give him a hand axe. Oh, no. <laughs> but he's going to cast Sacred Flame instead. What's your character's name again? Nihilus? Nihilus. Yeah. Nihilus reaching down to his empty pocket. Yeah, he, he reaches down for a weapon and he's like, oh shit. So he pulls out his holy symbol instead. Points it at this uh, goblin. As you watch a small pillar of light shoot down from the sky. Oh. But the goblin manages to dodge out of the way. Oh, I bet everyone inside saw that too. It seems flashy. Alright, it's Belras's turn. Uh, Here we go. I don't know, I feel like we should have done some reconnaissance first. <laughs> so we can I hear, mean, we can hear goblins in the tavern and this is supposed to be where we're supposed to go. You can do that if you want. I, I have know, a goal. I think you already bloody killed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and this man just shot flames at the other. <laughs> this guy just satellite flamed the other one. <laughs> Sacred flames. All right, I I wanna. Can I? I wanna. Wait, thirty feet. <clears throat> How does this work? Can I move and do a spell, or? Yes, yes, you can. And how far can I move? Thirty feet. 30 feet, so six squares. Six, including like the one diagonal? Yeah, uh, you can move up to as many diagonals as you want. This is fifth edition, not Pathfinder. Yeah. So you can just move six diagonally, and that's still six squares? Yep. Yeah, that's easy enough. Yep, and we're going the super simple Dungeon and Dragons game. So, and each, each square is five feet? So, like, that one goblin there is, what, 20 feet away from you? Uh, from me? Yes. Okay, just wanted to see if I... 
had it right. Twenty. Uh, I want to. I think I, I can move here. That's like sure. twenty feet or so. Yep. And I want. Yeah. I'd like to cast. A charm person on that goblin. Okay, I cast charm person on the goblin. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, what is your save DC? That spell save DC? Yes. Uh, do I click it or I just tell you? Uh, you can just tell me. 13. Okay, well. Let me see something with Charm Person real quick. Because... <clears throat> Seems like your friends are a little bit hostile to him. So he may actually have a better chance at resisting it. <clears throat> All these spells that have like component requirements, am I just supposed to assume that I have these? Uh, so, verbal components is being able to speak, somatic components are uh, hand gestures, yeah. uh, material yeah. components are. Um, are issued if you have either a spell casting focus or a spell component pouch. Your spell component pouch would have anything that doesn't have a monetary value in it. So but, because I have um my yes. what's it called? My rod? My rod? Yes. I don't I don't need an owl feather and a pearl. Um no. Unless the pearl has a monetary component that's more than uh, that oh, I, think, I think it does for this okay. one. Does it identify? Yeah, identify a pearl worth yeah. at least 100 gold. Yeah, so you'll actually need to supply that. But, oh. unless it specifically says that this thing is consumed, you only need one. Uh-huh. Choose one object we touch. Magic hunting so uh, it seems yeah. that your spell has taken effect and he looks at you in a friendly light. Uh <clears throat> Can I wait. Can I talk to this guy? Uh well. So you know goblins have their own language called goblin, but yeah. uh, some of them do also speak common. Uh so yes, you can try to speak to him. Okay, I wanna I wanna ask this uh Yeah, I wanna ask the goblin what the sitch is in the tavern. I mean what hold on say? do we know what we're what our objective here is? We're just or is it you were to like deliver we, supplies here. And that's it? Yep. That's all you were told. To just deliver supplies here. What if we're delivering to the goblins? Oh no, I killed one. Yeah, ask him. Well, I mean. <laughs> how, how do I phrase this? So, this is an RPG, so whatever you say will be what you say. <clears throat> make sure it rhymes. Oh, shit. I need a minute. <laughs> you don't need to make sure it rhymes. Not all bards need to rhyme. No, yeah, but this bar needs to spit hot fire. Uh, lukewarm water. <laughs> uh, hey there, little man. Why don't you tell us what you can? We were supposed to make a delivery here. Is there anything in that tavern that we should fear? Oh, good job. Damn. <laughs> <clears throat> If this was exalted, you would get bonus stats for doing that. <laughs> um, I'm not always going to give you it, but that was pretty good for on the fly. I'm going to give you what's called inspiration. <laughs> inspiration is, in essence, a currency that you can use. Anytime you roll a d20, you can roll. Uh, you can use the inspiration to roll twice and take the higher of the two. Wow. Oh, so this is where those two numbers would go and come in place? Yes, and then you'd pick whichever one's the higher one out of them. 
Nito. Um, he will tell you that him and Boss Girk, as well as his brothers and sisters, have taken over the tavern. Um, and this was a plan that they had been planning for many, many days. And that'll be the end of your turn, because that seems like a lot of stuff for six seconds. So it's uh, Racist Zero's turn. Okay. Was that, like, taken over, like, conquered, or taken over, like, inherited? (laughs) You don't know. (laughs) Well. Zero has moved up. Can I move again? Sure. You can double move if you'd like. Oh, if the goblin sees me as friendly... That doesn't apply to the rest of you, though, does it? It generally applies to your party. Oh, okay. And, um, uh... So, Z- yep. Zero, when you get over there, from what you've seen through the place, you actually notice another one. Uh, it looks like his hands are bloody. And uh, he has a short sword out that also looks bloody. Uh, and that over there is the stables. I'm sure there's completely normal reasons for this. Mm-hmm. And you said this goblin, that Bin Chum, is friendly to us? Um, he's... I mean, he's answering his questions and it doesn't look like he's pulled out his weapon yet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask him. Hey, creature. <laughs> um, how many of you are there? Uh, he tells you that there are uh, five of them. Okay. So, five in total, including the two we just killed? Or the one we just killed? Uh, yes. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, so there's four more. Uh, I'm sorry, he actually tells you that there are seven of them. There's seven of them. Yes. <laughs> Be clear. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, in- not including Boss Girk. So there's eight of them. Possibly. <laughs> How does it keep getting worse? Uh, I, uh, goblins are not very smart creatures. Okay. <laughs> uh, I assume the rest of my party can hear him? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, anything else I can do for the turn? Uh, you've double moved, so you what race? You're a sorcerer, so no. Okay. Okay, that's it. Where did my turn tracker go? What the fuck? Oh, sorry if you went over this already, but like, how long is a turn in time? A a, a turn in uh in game is six seconds. Oh jeez. Yeah. So this goblin over here, here's some talking. Uh, she says something in Goblin. <laughs> and I assume none of us here. <clears throat> she comes out and sees a bunch of knife ears. And his friend comes out too. Is, they see all y'all jerks. What? They are. Uh, they don't like you guys being here. And considering that Zero is standing pretty much out in the open, he's a pretty easy picking. So the one drops his short sword that he has, pulls out his short short bow, and uh, that is a twenty to hit you, sir. <laughs> Bye, Zero. <laughs> Just a hit. <clears throat> Oof, and you're going to take eight points of piercing damage. Okay, guess I'm dead. I don't have seven hit one. <laughs> so you are unconscious and bleeding out. Oh, oh that's kind of dead. Uh, if it comes back to your turn, we will deal with that in a second. But for now, we're going to put a <clears throat> blue thing. Oh, blue doesn't. Crazy, isn't it? Just getting shot out of nowhere. <laughs> this guy right here. Is gonna shoot at the 
cleric and miss because that's only a 10. Uh, Robledge, your turn. You see two more goblins coming out of the stables. Hmm. I do. Two goblins. The... That's four hands. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be rich. Um. <clears throat> Shit, I haven't, I haven't done this at all for some of my spells. I haven't got color spray in there. Well, the color spray can't reach, but I haven't set it up. I just <clears throat> missed. Oh, so question. Uh, the other goblins there being aggressive towards us, the party hasn't changed. The one I charmed <clears throat> being nope. friendly towards us. Nope. And it, it, when when you and your friends get in a fight with another group of your friends, you kind of you kind of don't try to get in the way of them. So, but they're still going to fight each other. Until it, unless until or unless we do something aggressive towards him specifically, he'll just chill. Pretty much. Forty forty five. <clears throat> Fifteen feet. <clears throat> uh. Oh wait, should I write something on my sheet to say that I used magic missile? Ah uh, yes, it'll be under. Spell slots used? Slots used. Uh, or is this slots total? remaining. Yeah. Slots remaining. So it started at two. Uh, now you're down to one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Thirty feet. I guess I will... <clears throat> Stay where I am and cast a firebolt on the closer of the two that have just come out. Sure, the one that shot the uh, shot at zero. Yeah. So roll the hit. It's a click firebolt. Yep. Fifteen will hit. Roll damage, which is a d10. Just roll d10. Nine. All right. He burns alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, the hand. It's <laughs> <laughs> this guy's turn, and seeing as how he will move here again. Forgetting Am I heavily I into or just unconscious? Uh, you are unconscious and bleeding out. I see. Luckily, this man over here is a cleric that I brought specifically for this reason. <laughs> and he will <clears throat> send a healing word at you. And heals you for six points of healing. Because he is a life cleric. So... Bringing you back to conscious, but you are on the floor. So in general, is there... Can you always be recover from zero hit points like that? Yes. So you don't go into negatives in this edition. How death will work <coughs> is at the beginning of your turn, you're going to roll a d20. On a 10 or higher, you will pass your death save. On a 9 or lower, you will fail your death save. If you pass three death saves, <coughs> uh, you are stable at zero and not dying anymore. If you fail all three death saves, you die. No, so you have uh, to that... fail three times. Yes. <clears throat> a natural one is two automatic failures. However, <laughs> a natural 20 um, means that you are conscious with one hit point. Okay. And there was a very unfortunate incident when I was rolling at, my, uh, rolling at a game store once where he rolled four nat 20s on death saves and kept getting up. So the next time that he fell after that, he was just like, I... I 
you have to die because you keep standing up some reason, so I had to kill him. <laughs> that was the first game that was second wins, like in Borderlands. <laughs> He's going to send another sacred flame over. But the goblin also manages to dodge it. <clears throat> uh, Bellarath, it's your turn. Oh, well. Things have gone south since the last time I did anything. <laughs> I blame Sarah. Uh, <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll do something. I'm, I'm thinking. <clears throat> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't kit myself out very well. I mean, worst comes to worst, you can always shoot him with the bow. Uh, wait, do you have a bow? Well, I mean, I didn't know if I wanted to actually fight the dude. <laughs> so far in this in this little skirmish, I'm the good guy. <laughs> uh... Can't I also charm person that one? Try. You gotta have to get in range though. Let me see. That dangerous plan. If you just move forward four squares, you'll be in range. So it's like here. This in range. 10, 20, 25, yep, you're in range. Okay, yeah, I'd like to charm person, the aggressive one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, he manages to resist your spell this time. Oh, wow. And he looks at you angrily with his cross, or with his short bow pointed at your face. <laughs> Lucky he's standing uh, behind Silas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm no I'm I'm standing behind him and a tree. <laughs> I, I moved. I moved with <laughs> with purpose. Hero, <laughs> it's your turn. You are lying in the mud. <clears throat> oh, I suppose I could have helped. So. I can't believe these savages would attack me without declaring themselves. <laughs> you'll, you'll find cloves. They're ruined. Unbelievable. Uh, so did he charm the other elf, uh, the other goblin? Uh, uh, considering that he has a short bow pointed at his face, no. Uh, Unless that's what I wanted all along. Tell me. So we're um, still I looking for his exit. Do what I'm too weak to do. So I, I tell the dwarf, my thank Longbeer for helping. And then. <laughs> Wow. Gonna... Wow. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah doesn't even know that we have names. <laughs> Introductions of your group, he was not paying attention. <laughs> he was setting up the tent. <laughs> His own tent. <laughs> I'm I, don't, shoot... I don't know who you are, but don't come in. <laughs> I'm going to shoot magic missile at the last goblin. Sure. 
Roll 3d4 plus 3. Oh, wait. Flash roll. <laughs> oh, <all> right. <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> I think he's, you can... Uh... <laughs> he's delirious. He's in his death throes. Uh, on the right. upper right, there's an actual set of macros that you can, I think, make uh, damage roll. Okay. For things like magic missile, or eventually <clears throat> fireball. Oh, okay. 11 points of damage, that will kill that goblin. Yeah, I've figured out that they have 9 or less health. Right, give me a minute for a thing. <clears throat> er, what does DC stand for anyway? Uh, <clears throat> ow. What is DC? Oh yeah, one of my spells is DC 13. All right, I'm back. <laughs> so the combat <clears throat> ends, considering that the one goblin is not hostile to you. Saka, on your stream, the chat for this setup is in the middle of the screen. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I just imported the main directory. Right <clears throat> Honestly, kind of funny. Well, I'll fix that just the step. <laughs> Well... Where else would they go? I wonder. <clears throat> so, uh, what would you like to do? How else we can move freely now? Because there's no combat. Yep. Uh, I would like to take my dagger and collect the hands of the goblins I didn't incinerate. <laughs> my okay. God. The other goblin is just waiting until the time runs out to kill you. <clears throat> How good am I at a dagger? Can I cut these hands off? What's your strength? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Is it 10, at least? It's 10. Okay, yeah, you can cut them off. It'll take a little bit of time, and you're going to get blood all over yourself. Okay, I'm cutting this goblin's hands off. You know, dead okay. goblins are going to be dead in a while. We could have taken this time to a certain situation. That's what this the rest goblin of you for. looks at you in terror and uh, moves away. <laughs> no, my friend. <laughs> he's got nothing to worry about. He's not dead. <laughs> oh, he's going to yeah. alert his boss now. Oh, and, uh, tell him not to. <laughs> not my turn, buddy. Uh, there's no turn order right now. Oh. <laughs> Just do you it. guys can kind of do whatever you want. So, so you see your half-elf <laughs> companion over there walking up to the goblin with a dagger and a gleam in, in her eye. And starts just mutilating the corpses. <clears throat> uh, what would the rest of you like to do? Mm. I mean... Well, I'd like to... What's going on? We, there, we established there's, or, there's like... What, at least, like, what, seven or eight? Of the of these dudes in this tavern, yeah. I walk I walk up to the dwarf and pat him on the back and tell him it's useful to have you around. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks over. He uh, looks up, I guess, because he is a dwarf, and says, "Well, that's why I'm here." <clears throat> uh, I think there should be five inside. Four plus the boss. If my math is correct, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot a firebolt at the goblin that shot me. 
What the? The, the dead one? Yes. The dead one that's already kind of a little bit charred? He's from already incinerated. I killed him with a firebolt. Oh, I, oh, I see. <laughs> this is the murder hobo aspect of the game, isn't it? Rob's <clears throat> got that thing. He sees goblins, I'm he kills goblins. Trying to make a living. Is it a living now, or your or your curiosity? Which one is it? If I, if I can sell them, I can fund more research. No, I just think it'd be really funny if we somehow in time intimidate the last goblin. We can leave Farrash his friend alone. Well, he's he's not hostile <clears throat> to us for at least a little bit more time. Yeah, but I'm shooting I'm shooting fireball at a goblin corpse and Rob was cutting one's hand off. Yeah, so, he's still moving away. goblin has got, got a big heart. <laughs> Growing smaller as time passes. <clears throat> I'm moving hey, on to the other, the other unincinerated... Well, I mean, if we're, if we're under no time constraint... Stop moving away, goblin! Come back! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm close to the window now. I mean, you okay, guys make sure I if, if we're under no time constraints, I just want to... Hey, I just want to I want to talk to him, assure him <clears throat> that I'm not gonna kill him. I mean, I did six. I did six point of fire damage to the goblin corpse. It was already incinerated. Oh <laughs> it's just ash now. <laughs> Burn skeleton. Would people buy ash? Wait, bones. Bones are good. Well, I, mean, I wish. Wait, how big is my bag? It's a backpack. Can think I of like a, a think of like a hiking backpack. I can fit. How big is a goblin? The hiking backpack um, with four hands, two and a half feet tall. I collect four goblin hands and a goblin skeleton. Okay. And you're gonna put them in your backpack next to your food, yeah. and your yeah. you know research oh, supplies and your spell book. Uh. He's just going to uh, stuff them in his pockets. <clears throat> Does anyone have a blanket? I know someone with the tent. <laughs> Sarah, can I borrow? <laughs> can I borrow the fabric from your tent? <laughs> I, just, I, I need I to wrap look, the hands. I just look at him in this thing and then walk away a little bit to the right. <laughs> okay, I'll leave. I'll leave the skeleton, but I need the hands. <laughs> I look at him and discuss. Can't you spare a sheet? Your uh, goblin friend over here asks, "What's wrong with your? Uh, what's wrong with the uh, tall, pointy ones?" <laughs> oh, you know. You're crazy. <clears throat> Silas, do you have any fabric? Uh, maybe. Perhaps a small bag. Anyway, ignoring the body horror going on. He has an co extra coin pouch that he tells you that he has, but it's only going to hold, like, maybe two goblin hands. Okay, I can use. Wait, I can tie the other two to the rope and tie them to the bag. <clears throat> he asked you why you're getting goblin hands. I wish to mummify them and sell them as trinkets. Uh, because to I, saw who? That, I, I saw that in the book. I don't know. We're going to a town eventually, right? Goblins are very common, so mummified goblin hands aren't really an oddity. What? <clears throat> then why'd I ruin my dress? I walk, the, I, I walk a little bit mm -hmm. over to the right to hang out with Barash to get away from this crazy hand stealing. Oh, I see. I'm a... I'm above you on the hierarchy of like the, the spiteful <laughs> goblin will step away from you because he saw you casting a firebolt at an already dead corpse. <clears throat> I asked Silas. <laughs> Jesus. I I look at the goblin very puzzled. How much no, money his do you think? time is running out. 
How much money do you think theoretically we could make off four goblin hands? Okay. He's he tells you he's never tried it before, so. <laughs> <clears throat> Like, oh yeah, I, I remind everyone there's probably a handful more of them. I can wait. I want I want to talk to this, the goblin. I want to ask him about ask him about Boss Girk. What uh, about him? <clears throat> He's their leader. How do they come to occupy this tavern? Uh, the tavern had lots of people, and those people seemed happy, and the boss Kirk wanted to be happy too, so he took the tavern. What happened That's to funny. the What happened to the people that used to be here? Uh, he tells you that there was only one person in there, and they threw him in to the closet to eat later. Huh. Oh. Oh, that's good intel. <clears throat> Sally, I felt like it was a pouch. All right, well. I uh, I told the halfling, go check the stable while he's <laughs> also doing that. Why would he listen to you? Oh, wait, is that me? It's yes. you. <laughs> you. <laughs> it's not really halfling, it's a ha like more <laughs> half blood. Yeah, halfling yes, is a different I, thing, isn't it? I understand that, but my nickname for him is halfling. All right, Charlie, well, the girl. Can uh, <clears throat> are you a girl? Charlie is a girl. Ah, I never noticed that before. Go check. Oh, you one. wouldn't. You wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> Why would you take the time to look? <laughs> Go check the table. <clears throat> fine, fine. Well, I want to ask Silas, the only other mentally sound person of this party, what he thinks we should do about our goblin friend. <clears throat> I think obviously these goblins, if they're eating people, that's not a good thing. Yeah. So. I mean, he, he, most goblins are kill on sight. Right. So we assume the rest of the goblin is in. I mean, if they're keeping a dude to eat him, that's that's enough for me to think. Oh well, them right. is bad what folks. Do, what the what does the half blood see? Do I need to roll perception or something? Oh, uh, hold on one sec. I have entered the the stable. Ah, as you enter the stable, the first thing that you notice is the smell of blood everywhere. Uh, in yeah. this, in the upper right stall, right about here, you can see the rem like a carcass of what looks to be like a horse of some sort uh, that looks like it's been mutilated. Oh. <clears throat> I found a dead horse. Uh, other than that, it's classic stable things. That's about it. Maybe we can use our charmed goblin to draw the other goblins out. Where we... So we're not walking into the tavern blind. Ah, oh, dude, what if we all like set an ambush? Oh wait, there's corpses everywhere. Maybe hide them. <laughs> Can we move the corpses and like hide in the stable and like draw them out over like here, like in this area? How are you gonna do that? Well, I assume Eris will, ask, will like get his gobby friend to say, "Oh, I think I saw someone over this direction. We should go out and look this way." And then we'll come out behind them. Plus, we only have to move two course. <clears throat> and the skeleton. <laughs> what? That's no skeleton. It's just ash. There is, there is a skeleton. You said it's a child skeleton. <laughs> uh, oh, I made your job easier. Look at my foresight. I think it would be easier to move one body than a fucking pile of bones. <clears throat> I don't know, it's up there. I see someone with the friend. Wow. Yes. 
Well, I mean, he was technically friendly to all of us until you guys yeah, went. He doesn't trust us. Until he, he started committing <laughs> genocide on his people. I did nothing. <laughs> they were already dead. I only killed one. Um, Killing one can hardly, hardly be considered genocide. I killed two. What can we even do? What, is it? He doesn't like tell him, get a goblin dude to run in and tell the boss, like, oh, there's bad dudes. They're hiding in the stable. While we obviously wait outside the stable or something. And if he goes in, we can trap him or something. You, this is just Dungeons and Dragons. You can do a letter, you can try anything you want. Right. So let's I, say, let's, let's say right. we have the buff like walk out like this way, seize the bodies, so he, he might get worried or something and get him. Well, I thought we were gonna hide the bodies. Well, if you're going, if you want to do the ambush in the stable, it'd be good to get him like riled up. Oh. No, no. Uh, get we'll move the bodies and get the goblin, the the last goblin to lead all of them into the stable. I have a plan. Oh, is he gonna involve <laughs> fucking setting them on fire? At least don't burn down the tavern. Else? <laughs> there may be a human inside the tavern. Let's not burn it down. <laughs> I set my, all my problems on fire. <laughs> Raven. Black, black mage. <clears throat> and Zero, I set my current problems and things that are currently not problems on fire. Anyway, uh, that's, right. my, that's my suggestion. That sounds good to me. Look, the alternative is he get eaten by Goblin. I feel like this is a gamble that he's willing to take, or at least I'm very willing to take it for him. You feel well, the... <clears throat> it's zero. At the very least, I start cleaning up the goblins and hiding them in like the trees over here. Okay. Right. Fine. I like it this. is messy work. As... It is, but I am already a mess. I do not notice. It's messy work, and no one else volunteers to help. <laughs> <laughs> Or just barking orders. <laughs> I like to imagine he's do he's doing everything with that stupid wine glass in his hand. <laughs> I don't think he bought wine, so he's like lying in lying in the dirt there. Yeah, like, oh my god, empty, these people! It's an empty glass. <laughs> he just carries it for the image. <clears throat> yeah, so I I moved the bodies over here. In here. Okay. Well. Okay. So I've. So everyone's already heard the details. In that we plan to hide. I guess is it? Are we hidden? Like behind a tree or something? Or you can kind of hide behind the trees if you'd like. We hide here. Yep. Okay. So. <clears throat> the uh, well, dwarf tells you that he is not very good at hiding. And like every step he takes, like his armor kind of jangles. <laughs> That's okay. He probably won't be making the first move, right? But we are. Oh, One of on our murder one. elves. <clears throat> it's up to the dice who goes first. Oh yeah. Oh. Um. <clears throat> I don't know. Does he? Does the fact that he's charmed? mean he's receptive to what I tell him to or he's your friend he'll do things within reason <clears throat> but lying to his other friends may not be part of that like so, lying to his uh, other uh, friends just so that you can kill them okay I want to tell him I'll tell, tell, him, him, I'll tell uh, him that lead your friend to the stable we have a surprise <laughs> or I want to tell him <laughs> you're like a crazy half elf bitch is hiding in the stables. He'll tell your dudes to run in there and you can capture her and take her hands. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. It's under skills. Oh, I'm persuasive as fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did I say that before? Like... <laughs> you roll a 10. <laughs> Good oh. enough. He says I'll do that. So he starts moving towards the front door. <clears throat> Shin, Shin, like, Silas Shin, should probably move. I thought yeah, Silas was in, pro in the process of moving. Silas is standing in front of the front door. 
He will well, actually he like <laughs> stand decently far away so that he doesn't make as much noise. Darash, why don't you hide with us? Yeah, I'll be I'll be here. Okay, what's what's this? Look, I'm not the offensive type. <laughs> All right. So, how about everyone roll a stealth check? <clears throat> well, this thing goes in. Stealth, 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 stealth. Oh. So you notice, uh, as well, two of you notice because the other uh, Belrath and uh, your cleric friend can't actually see it, but both the elves actually notice that as soon as he like opens the door and steps in. Two short swords almost impale him, but stop short of actually stabbing him. Oh. No, it was a trap. <clears throat> Thanks, little goblin buddy. He uh, speaks <clears throat> in goblin to his uh, friends there. And. They come back out. Oh, actually, he goes over here first. And then these two goblins come out. Oh, shit. Oh, not all of them. And eventually, oh. after a couple of seconds, these guys come back. So, how's your... Oh, wow. Those are some pretty good stealth rolls, except for zeros. <laughs> <Fucking terrible. laughs> so how if you ruin your own plan, I swear to God. He's, 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 still got, he's, like, he's still got the arrow sticking out of him. <laughs> <laughs> he's holding he's holding his wine glass up high so it doesn't like spill. Like his like, pinky tip is extended up outside of the tree. <clears throat> oh dude, this so, uh, um, the good news uh, is is that they don't notice any of you. What's his name? Grug? 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 Uh, Gurk. 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 So uh they get there. And it doesn't look like they noticed you. Do we roll initiative? Uh, yes. You will roll initiative as soon as I add you into the initiative turns again. Hold on a sec. Oh, wait. We want them to actually go in the stable? <clears throat> no, we probably, we probably shouldn't avoid burning down the stable. If possible. <clears throat> Suddenly he has a conscience. Conscience? Oh, no, I, I just thought it was easy. I don't know. Why do I, I, know, know. I never planned to burn down this table. It's just that it might happen. And it <laughs> Luckily, the, ta m the walls of the tavern are made out of stone. Oh, okay. The roof, however... <laughs> <clears throat> All right, you should be able to roll initiative. It should add, does it? No, since I've added your turn. Second, <clears throat> so Sarah, communicate his plan, even though he's going third. I assume that he would have told you your pl the plan beforehand. Yeah, we, he we, tried to, we tried to attack them when they have their back turned. That's, That's all the plan. He communicated that he had a plan. <laughs> your entire big plan was just attack their backs? <laughs> yes. Wow. You made it sound a lot grander than that. <laughs> you uh, you noticed that English. one of the goblins... Uh, is slightly bigger than the other ones, but actually has a pair of short swords. Uh, and a short bow. Which one is that? Uh, the orange one. Oh, Krug. 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 <clears throat> I think that one's got, guys. I concur. Oh, wait, which one is Sekka's friend? I don't want to shoot him. You can't tell. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> all, all the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the charmer would wear off eventually, and then he would know that I charmed him. The charm will wear off in about 50 minutes, yes. 
<clears throat> I mean, what can I even do with him? It's not, it's not like I can death note him and tell him to disappear himself. <laughs> Wait, since <laughs> we're sneak attacking, do we not have Oh my initiative? god, that goblin rook got 20. But they don't know we're here. Don't we have initiative? They sure don't. <clears throat> so, yeah. yeah. So we take our turns first, but he'll be going first straight after. And they don't notice that you're here, so you have what is called advantage. You will roll two dice and take the higher if you roll, make an attack roll. Oh. And uh, it is Robla's turn. Yeah, what's my strongest spell? It's probably Magic Missile. <laughs> probably. Actually, uh, did you wait <clears throat> until they actually opened the door here, or did you wait before they went in? Oh, before they would have gone in. Is it possible to burn down the bar, the burn down the barn without harming the tavern? To burn down the barn? No, because the roofs are connected. I, I see. Yeah. Fire would spread. <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll wait for them to huddle together and check, and then we'll attack. Okay, so they um, shouldn't they be closer? Hmm. Shouldn't they be closer to try to get in? Yeah, I mean, I one what of you, them's at the know? door. Your goblin whisperer? <laughs> They're not savages. They can wait turns to use the door. They are savages. <laughs> <laughs> so this one opens the door. And actually, you notice now... <clears throat> there was another one that also has opened the door to try to ambush you from both sides. Oh. Oh. Sneaky boys. It's always the clever. Oh yeah, luckily where I am, I could see through. Yeah. I saw these guys go in and start looking. <clears throat> uh they tell you they haven't they don't see anyone in here. Uh so this guy uh, do you want to do anything, Robler, or do you still want to wait? <clears throat> I don't know, because I'm just trying to think. Tara, D, could you do something to, like, block the door? <clears throat> well, whose turn is the next? The dwarfs. So cool. if, we could, if we could... I don't know. Cause I don't want to. I don't want to attack Guck and then just fuck the whole thing up. <clears throat> this what is do you good, think? I told, uh, I, I whispered to you. This is a good chance to attack their boss while his back is turned. Okay. <laughs> you insist. <clears throat> I'm going to cast my second magic missile on Guck. Okay. Ready for plus three. Three D four plus three. Yep, a D four plus one per missile. Oh, none of you speak goblins, so none of you actually understand what they're saying. Yeah, no. <clears throat> huh. Well, I have cast my spell. All right. So all three missiles impact into him. And he looks over at you guys angrily. There is not a dead Gurk. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he, he has more than 9 HP. It was very fair to assume that. <clears throat> uh, but he is still surprised, so he doesn't really get to do anything yet. Uh, he has Nihilus over here, who has heard your spell cast. I'm <clears throat> up. Walk over this boy over here. And... Enchanters, the time. What spells does this idiot have? <laughs> oh... Yeah, sacred flame, so I guess I'll sacred flame again. Surely you can't miss three sacred flame in a row. Sure can. 
<laughs> well, it turns out goblins are small and nimble, and trying to hit them with a spell is kind of difficult. Uh, Bell that doesn't doesn't look that difficult to me, Zero. No, it's me. Yeah. Uh, I also put some music on. Hmm. I would like to. Hmm. Want to start cast Longstrider on Silas? Oh. I said before uh, combat started actually. Oh. oh. Because it lasts a, it lasts a while if you oh. look at the duration. Lasts an hour, yes. Yeah. You could have cast that beforehand, so it actually he will move an extra 10 feet, I think. Oh. Is also, it... just saying he did it? Yeah. Okay. That's nice. nice. Because you guys are new, I will allow it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, I, didn't, well, I didn't know what was going on. It was, sure. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if someone discussed the plan. <laughs> and if you, if you want to say that you didn't know the plan, then, we can, then you can say, yeah, you move up and you can cast on him. Uh, but you actually can't because you are out of first level spells. You cast two charm persons. Well, I thought I could. Oh wait. Oh. So I can only have. I can only have two uses of any spell of all spells. Period. Per day. Yes. Yeah. Per day. Oh, I was confused. I thought I could have. I could. I thought I could do like. No, two. you can't cast each spell twice a day. No, that's. Oh no! I thought I could do it like in indefinite amount of times. Ah, uh, those are the cantrips. You can do all the oh, cantrips. Oh shit! Okay, I have my level one spell. Okay, hold on. I need, to, I need to rethink my actions then. So I can only use cantrips now. So I'm just stuck by a bull thing. Shocking grasp. Do I have that? I don't know. Wait, no, can, you catch, can you not catch Magic Missile again? Or? I only had two. Hmm. Magic Missile is a spell for me. Magic Missile is a spell for everyone. Oh, shit. Sure. Uh, I wasn't sure if Zero had some holier than thou version. Wait, hold on. 60. Okay, so how many uh, how many spells can we cast? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, up to two. You can cast as many cantrips as you want, but you can only you only have two spell slots. So you can only cast two right. spells of first level or higher currently. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll just I'll cast vicious mockery on on Girk. Okay, uh, so you actually need to move up so you can see him because you are currently sitting at the bottom of a ledge. Oh, uh, is this suitable? Yeah. That's suitable. <laughs> hiding, <laughs> hiding behind the door. <laughs> I'm like seven feet tall. <clears throat> Zach, you're a bard, right? Yes. That's your boss. And what were you? A bard, a sorcerer, a psychopath. You notice a little bit of... Uh, how much damage do you do? Uh, I gotta click the thing, right? What? What was your class? Uh, dun dungeon Master. <clears throat> What's Silas's class? Uh, cleric. Life Cleric. Life. Oh, is that different? Uh, no, it's, uh, clerics have to choose a domain at first level, whereas you guys will choose, like, your, uh, thing at third level. Oh, the spaces didn't win. So, uh, he bleeds from his ears and nose a little bit, and yells angrily in Goblin. <clears throat> Hello, Lisa. And it's Zero's turn. Uh, I gotta AFK in a minute. Which goblin has finished the uh, 20? Oh, that one. All of them. All of them? 
Yes. All of the red ones. Oh. That's a problem. Heavy. So you say I have two more spellcasts? No, uh, you've only used Firebolt, so yes. Okay. So you notice above your first uh, your first level spells on your spell page, mm -hmm. it says spell slots remaining. Every time you use any of your first level spells, you will uh, basically mark one of them off. Where? What does this say? Uh, slots remaining. I don't see it. You see, you see how under your cantrips it says zero cantrips, and under it it says one slots total, two slots remaining. Okay, I'll show you. <clears throat> Where do you post it? <clears throat> in a this in our channel. <clears throat> That part there. Oh, you have to click spells at the top right of your character sheet. Or it's just all right. uh, spells. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> I am going to cast Magic Missile and. All three of them at him. Yep. Alright. All damage. I wonder if there's a dark one for that Why are your eyes so weak? <laughs> He takes the missiles to the chest and body, and he crumples into the dirt on the movie. Hey! that their leader has died. Good start. Oh, <laughs> Are they running? First, easy. Easy win. What about the hands? I, I, I can only carry two, apparently. I'm a dash. <clears throat> Just run again. That's <laughs> Showing up on Sega Stream because very zoomed, but the goblins are escaping to the north. Very unfortunate. <clears throat> I can just let him go, right? Sure can. It is your turn, sir. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna move up to Gurk and investigate what he has on him. Okay, uh, so he has a couple pouches. He has two goblin hands, uh, <laughs> a pair of short sword, a short bow, uh, and a what looks to be a pouch uh, that has some coins in it. Okay. <clears throat> 
I don't really have any useful weapons. All right. So is anyone actually going to chase down the goblins or not? I'm not interested. <clears throat> what about you, Zero? I have no interest in fighting savages more than I can me too. <laughs> so that initiative will be over. In essence, combat mode is done. You can kind of do what you want. I want to take the gold off from Gook. Sure. Oh. So you have a money pouch. Yeah. <clears throat> How much oh, money back. is it? Looks like you guys cleaned up. <laughs> they all ran away. <laughs> they what? They all ran off. They ran away. Oh. But you killed Gurk? Yeah, we did. You find a three gold and six silver pieces inside his nice. money pouch. I will collect these. Oh, sure you will. How much was it? Sorry. Three gold and six silver. Three gold and six silver. Mm. Collect them all for okay. yourself, huh? I have said repeatedly, I will lend you money. Mm. Do you guys want any of this stuff? He's got like pouches and swords and shit. Oh, actually, you said he had other pouches, right? What's in those pouches? Uh, two of them are empty. Two of them ha are, and one of them has a uh, pair of glass vials with some sort of liquid in them. Oh, Did I take those. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you I decide write? to take a rest, a short rest, <laughs> you can try to identify the what's in them. Yeah. Okay. Because I have a researcher. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just write on my bio. I'm gonna use this. Uh, oh, the treasure tab. Can I just write two glass files here? Uh, yeah. Two, write two potions. Po two unknown potions. So combat is over, right? Yep. Yeah, you're free. You're free to move. I'm. I don't want anything <laughs> he else. He moves now. instantly there. <laughs> <clears throat> don't incinerate him. I want to. His, the quality uh, of his Make an arcana check, actually, Robla, as you pick up the files. Oh, okay. Uh, just click arcana. It's not a very difficult check. Would you roll 15? You recognize them as two potions of healing. Oh. Uh, as an action, you can drink one of them to heal 2d4 plus 2. writing this next to the thing 2d4 plus 2 yep that's for one so one is 2d4 plus 2 yeah I asked the half -life okay. well. <clears throat> I found some gold and two healing potions and I am not interested in his weaponry mm. why the quality of his weapon one of the swords looks kind of rusted and like very low quality one of them looks like it's actually in fairly decent quality, as if he's re had, as if he had just recently acquired it. Mm, okay. I Does up, anyone? I pick up the uh, good quality sword. <clears throat> okay. Does anyone not covered in blood and dirt want to go rescue the guy in the closet? I don't think I will give the best impression if I am the one to open the closet door. Well, I mean. Probably let the place out in general. Yeah, I'm just saying if if said man is still alive, uh, blood soaked girl probably isn't the probably, best thing to say. Probably the cleric, the least threatening looking. Uh, the cleric in heavy armor with a bloody uh, bloody warhammer. Yeah, I, I'll go <laughs> ahead and head into the No, I, his actual armor, his weapons are actually clean because he's I'll head into the tavern as the most diplomatic member of the party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you see that the there's like half-eaten food and uh, the tables and chairs have kind of been strewn about. It, there's like mud, uh, muddy footprints like all over the place. Okay. Is there anything out of place? Uh, okay. Everything's kind of out of place. Everything looks like it's kind of been like oh, jumped on or like just eaten or gnawed upon. Okay. 
I'm like, yep, looks like Goblin. I say in the closet is down in the bottom right. Mm. Like, oh, I see it. Or a base, it looks a like there is a. It looks like a basement because it like fades to black. Although I don't know how these maps are designed. Is there's also is there a way upstairs? Or is that stairs down? Oh, uh, that is a set of stairs <laughs> down. Oof, okay. Excuse and me. is there? I'll go ahead and take the stairs up. Okay, I'll go with you. Okay. They were never seen again. Someone go to the closet, please. <laughs> well, I, don't know, I don't know which one. I don't know what the closet is. I think it's this this room. You press and yeah. hold, you can ping a location. Oh, is that how you're doing that? Yeah. <coughs> oh. Uh, well, I'd like to... Okay. Uh, so... Just go Zero around, which and is Rabla, you walk upstairs. And you notice oh. that it seems to be an inn of some sort. Uh, right. There are multiple uh, rooms, uh, multiple doorways that we, you would assume to go to rooms. Okay. Uh, but all the doors are locked. That makes sense. <clears throat> Surely this man will be so gracious for his rescue that we will get a free stay here today. Uh, Eris, you walk into what looks to be a kitchen. There, everything's pretty much knocked over. There's flour, like, there's like, uh, jars of flour that have just been kind of knocked over. Um, like jerky and some other types of meats have been like eaten and kind of thrown on the ground. And, uh, there seems the a couple of the like clay pots and barrels have been smashed in. Uh, in the area to okay. is this the closet that i'm standing next to right now uh it looks to be a pantry of some sort is there a door in it can i like just knock there on the sure door, door on knock on the door yeah. see if they ask if anyone's there sure you knock on the door uh you make a perception check Uh, you hear rustling on the other side, and some, like, some muffled speaking, but you can't make out what they say. Okay. Um. I guess I'd like to just motion to Silas that I'm going to open the door, just in case. And, I guess, just in case I'll... I'll draw my dagger as well, okay. and then open the door. Uh, as you open the door... Does a 17 hit you? Jesus. What? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> uh, watch your armor class. 13, right? 13. Uh, you take a single point of damage as you open the door and a clay pot smashes on your head. Fucking brutes. <laughs> uh, lying, you open the door to what looks to be like a pantry of some sort. Uh, that's still in pretty good condition, considering. Uh, and on the floor you see a uh, brown-haired man uh, tied up and gagged. Uh, wait, what? how'd the pot hit me? Uh, it was on a string and set to smash you in the face when the door was opened. Okay. Well, <laughs> ow. <laughs> so, uh, why you should possibly start looking for traps. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Planning. Yeah. Jesus, that pot took up twelve percent of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, why don't <laughs> you're like, why don't we let our 
well armored cleric friend take the leap, take the point then. I'll just, the other one could have I'll just back off. Your cleric uh, walks over there and cuts the man's ropes free. Yeah. The man kind of stands up and stretches a little bit before pulling off the uh, pulling out the gag out of his mouth and looks at you all with kind of a sigh of relief and says oh so you uh you managed to get rid of those goblins eh thank god uh, uh, who are you who are you exactly though i guess you should ask are you the tavern are you the are you the owner of this tavern yeah, my name's uh, Davian. Oh. Uh. Mm. Uh, Zero. Zero. An owner and proprietor of the Rust Book. Zero and uh, Gerald are still upstairs, are they? They sure are. I guess we should say may as well say we took a job to make a delivery to this tavern that's uh yeah that should have been coming soon yeah um well as you can kind of tell we're gonna need to get more supplies later anyways but um finally steps out and kind of looks over at his tavern and he's like, hey, it looks like I'm also gonna need to clean up a bit here. It's at about that time that you guys would probably have come back downstairs. Nice. I was ah, I see you guys found somebody. I presume this <laughs> is the tavern owner? Yeah. I informed him we were hired to deliver some goods. Uh, yeah, your large scaly friend there had told me about that. Um, <clears throat> says, uh, well, uh, your dwarf has been carrying him because you're all kind of squishy and weak. So he hands him over and he just kind of puts him in the, uh, he checks some of the barrels. Uh, before putting them in the pantry and says, uh, well, I would offer to, uh, yeah, I would offer to like a spot, but it's not the cleanest here. <clears throat> I don't mind a dirty room if it lets us rest. Uh, it's at this point it's probably heading into the early afternoon uh, he tells you that you are welcome to stay here for as long as you need uh, and a, he will start dinner in probably a few hours if you would like to stay here for uh, and eat as well yeah well, nice. this dude's not phased at all he tees <laughs> do you actually say that or <laughs> no no <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, if, I mean, you should, you should probably ask if he's if he was the only person here, or he's, he's yeah, the only there person was here, a... or everyone else. Or... He says uh, there were a couple of merchants that were staying here, but they headed down to Baldur's Gate. Um, oh, so he was currently the only one in here. I, I look at him kind of strangely. He's like, you seem to be unfaced with someone who's get in just a man carrying a wine glass we live in a very uh, we live in a more dangerous area than such as uh, than places like the main city where we kind of have to deal with things like this on a regular not on a regular basis but on a on a more frequent basis than anywhere else um he 
may have been able to hold them off uh, at, if, if there weren't so many, if there had been so many of them attacking. Uh, sadly, he, his short sword, um, as he had begun to take stock of the area, had been stolen from him by one of the goblins. Uh, oh, hi. and before noticing that it is currently attached to your hip. <laughs> okay. I handed the sword back to him. Wow. Uh, he thanks you before uh, going back over to the bar and uh, placing it underneath the bar. Oh, it's just a decorative piece. <laughs> Still, I don't know what he had. How convenient was that? <clears throat> right. mm. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to take a seat here because my head hurts. Okay. Why don't you sit at a different table for me? Because you're crazy. <laughs> You've got your you're covered in blood. You got <laughs> goblin hands sticking out of your pockets. <laughs> They're in a couch. No. <laughs> that chair was close enough. That's all. That's where we'll call it for the night. You guys kind of got a little taste of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I only had about this much prepped. So. Yeah, yeah, it seems, seems alright, and I think my only issue or hang-up with the game is, uh, I really need to be, like, <laughs> controlled tightly, or else I think I'll go <laughs> off the rails. <clears throat> that, that is the, that's the best part about the mean, drag, though. I mean, you know, that might not, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm, I'm like the type that wants to do it properly once, so you know how it's supposed to go, before you start, you know, doing improvisation. You know, like I don't even know any of the basics or anything. Yeah, that's, that's what this mini campaign's gonna be for. You'll probably get to, uh, probably around level four-ish by the time I'm done with it. Hey. Oh yeah, speaking uh, of that. Did we get EXP? Uh, you did, but I have to calculate it. Okay. Are... Actually, I'm not going to do EXP. I'm just going to tell you that you're going to level when I tell you to level. Oh, okay. So, how are hit points recovered normally? You just If you rest somewhere overnight, so, is that it? So, there's two ways to recover hit points. Uh, at the end of the night, if you take a long rest and you get a full eight hours of sleep, or four hours, of four hours of meditation in the case of zero, uh, you will regain all your hit points and half of your hit dice rounded up. Uh, if you take a short rest, which is basically you kind of sit there and take a breather uh, for about for an hour, you can use what is called your hit dice. If you look at your character sheet, mm -hmm. Underneath oh, I see. I see the, the hit temporary dice. hit points is your number of hit dice. You can use those and just you would roll whatever the hit dice is, and after an hour, that's how many hit points you would recover. As a bard, as well, during a short rest when you level up, uh, you're going to have an ability called Song of Rest, which will actually add uh, extra dice, extra d6s to healing if they if you heal during a short rest. But you don't need to worry about that now. Yeah. Okay. That was me. I only fell no. die. <laughs> you only fell unconscious. <clears throat> okay. I had a good time. Uh, good. I half died. Zero full died. And I brought death to others. You're like... <laughs> you're... You should edit that profile picture of yours and like splotches of <laughs> like blood. blood. <laughs> I kept on saying this, hoping that you would uh, pick up on it, but you you may have taken a call called spell uh, cantrip called prestidigitation, and it will clean you up. Did I, did I take that? I don't know. I assume zero would have taken it. I think I looked at it, but didn't. I didn't even know that that was an option. I remember seeing that. I don't remember taking it, but 
I, I played an Elf <laughs> Supremacist Wizard once uh, back probably about 10 years ago. Uh, precisely the same reason, so I could make fun of my half elf friend. <laughs> <laughs> and prestidigitation was the one like one of the first cantrips i had taken um and well, because I, I, I needed to keep my clothes clean and you know everything the I second know cantrip i didn't I know, know what the thing oh actually you know what you deleted one of my cantrips so i'll go ahead and add that one yeah you can add it back to your spell um, oh, yeah. The second one that I had chosen actually was mending, so that I could always keep my nobleman's clothing in tip top condition. <laughs> what, what was it called? Uh, prestidigitation. So I need a shower, is what you're you saying. You can actually, you should be able to. <laughs> yeah. I think so. You can That's actually, uh, under the exclamation point up top in the upper right there's a compendium and actually you can copy it right from the thing if you search for it i think you should be able to do that uh -huh. i'm not I sure if you guys have access to the compendium yeah uh, there's, I, there's I guess a third tab right there yeah but how did i add it um just Copy it. I don't see an option. I mean, Control C. Huh? Like, what am I copying? Uh, oh, uh, into your spellbook. Oh, uh, just the name, right? Uh, you can do just the name, and then you can add the rest of the flavor text under it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm trying to add color splash. Color spray. Color spray because I don't have color spray on my list of attacks to calculate. So I forgot to do that one. So. Attack. How do I close this up? Yeah. So, yeah, if you press the little add button on the left side of your cantrips, it'll, you can put the name in there and then you can just copy the description of the spell into the description here. Got it. Uh, what school is it? Does it? I don't know if it has a school. Uh, uh, it is a transmutation spell, actually. Okay. Oh, can't transmutation. <clears throat> Thing time is one action. <clears throat> Range self or ten feet. Um, we're gonna need to remember this for the next time, but all of the spells that you know are in your spellbook. At the beginning of the day, you're gonna choose a number of spells equal to your intelligence modifier, which is three or four, which is three, mm -hmm. uh, and add that to your wizard level. And you see the little dot next to the thing? Your wizard Hi. level plus your intelligence modifier. Uh, and you're gonna actually need to uh, prepare your spells. Oh, so okay. while they can cast any spells that they know, you have access to a wider variety of spells, mm -hmm. um, but you can't prepare them all, th all at the same time. So right now you would have uh, four spells prepared. Yeah. Out of six. Um, however, you're also a ritual caster, so you actually don't need to um, prepare to detect magic as one of them. Okay. Can you help me put color spray in? Color spray is not even an attack, is it? I thought it was. Well, I mean, you can just do. So when you want to cast yeah. color spray, 
you just go into your spells and then you just press it uh, out of your spell book right there. Oh, okay. And then it'll say cast at what level? Yeah, let me test it. <clears throat> so I click this. Oh, okay. Yep. And you guys got a lot going on. Yeah, and then you're going to roll 6d10 to find out how many hit points of creatures that affects. Oh, okay, so I don't need to put it in that other thing. Yeah. So then you roll that. I rolled very low for 6d10. Jesus <sighs> Christ. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> oh, I should have... didn't even notice this bardic inspiration thing. Part of me wanted to step in front of all the goblin and use burning hand, but I also didn't want to die. It's a very good spell. You know, except Burr. for the part where it's in <laughs> melee ring. <laughs> well, yeah. in the first fight, I wanted to use Thunder Wave and knock goblins away, but also knock Sarah's tent away. That's a <laughs> bonus action. Uh, so remember how I told you you have an action and then you have what's called a bonus action? Yeah. Uh, you can use both an action and a bonus action in one turn. Uh, no. A bonus action is kind of just like a quick ability. Um, my, you, the cleric that I'm playing has a bonus action spell called Healing Word, which is how he can still take the majority of things by moving up and trying to attack and still heal people. Is there Yours would... something that denotes whether something is a bonus action? Oh, uh, it... it literally says in the in the ability. So your bardic inspiration also says as a bonus action you can yeah I'm looking at like, what about like cantrips. Uh, cantrips it'll tell you the casting time. Okay, so the cast time says uh, one action, for example. So that's just action. Yes, but if you look at the spell called Shield, or no, uh, Misty Step, that is the wrong thing. And uh, actions don't include things like movement? Uh, no, okay. action does not include movement. So if we look at Misty Step, which right here specifically says as a bonus action. Okay. And then... There's one more thing. When it's not your turn, you have what's called a reaction. Uh, remember in the fight with the bandits where uh, the cleric manages to take an attack at a person uh, as he's running away from his melee range? Yeah. Uh, you can use your reaction to make an attack of what's called an attack of opportunity uh, against anyone that's leaving your uh, squares that has not disengaged. Uh, there are other reactions. The bigger ones for you three specifically is going to be a spell called Shield, which will increase your armor class by five for that turn. Alright, okay. Yeah, I just like completely ignored this Bardic Inspiration thing and I was like... The whole time I was feeling, I was thinking, I was feeling like, oh, what am I even doing? What's a bard even do besides like insult them? <laughs> uh, a fifth edition bard will inspire, uh, will usually inspire someone to greater feats of strength. Right. However, I've, I've read, I've read this thing now, and I think, oh yeah, I should have just used bardic inspiration on people instead of yes. doing anything myself. <laughs> Uh, you, in essence, have a pool of them equal to your Charisma modifier, I believe? Right, so I think I can do it three times? Yes. <clears throat> so you will be able to use it three times a day. Uh, at sixth level, you'll be able to do it every... Uh, you can use it uh, the three times every short rest. <clears throat> but that's not a thing that you're going to get this campaign. Sure. Two well, things to know for next time. Yes. And I'm updating my treasure. So usually, these things are split amongst everyone equally. <laughs> because then it's not just a mad scramble to find you, the boss. You should be. Not just, not just a fucking... 99.99% of the time, it's split evenly amongst the party. 
Oh, my wallet is open to... That's not how it works. You can't, you can't gain it. something that's supposed that to go works. to everyone and then decide to loan it out. Well... Why is it there? Next time. <clears throat> you can have the next guy's money. Well, that's how it works either. Well, then I guess we'll split the next guy's money. <laughs> Do you want to borrow some gold right now? I don't want to borrow any gold. What's the problem? But I would like to have the gold that I've earned. <laughs> then let me know and I'll give it to you. Wow. <laughs> Bravo is playing a complex character. We picked up three gold and six silver. Do you want me to give you one gold? <sighs> that's not how. That's not split properly. Always. Well, I'll give one gold to Vera as well. As you reckon, at the six silver. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the math. Sarah, do the math. The math of what? The six gold, uh, the free gold and six silver. What about it? Oh, see, he doesn't want it. Well, I don't. I don't. Well, I mean, I think we should all get an equal split. I don't mind if it's something like it would be just nice holding to on to the, all the money that we get it would and be nice dividing it each. later. It would just be nine silver each, right? Ten silver to a gold. 36 silvers worth. Yeah, Divides by four. So. What's between you, silver and you gold? You also, I forgot, you also got paid your 10 gold each by the. Uh, oh, by yeah, the, nice. He, uh. You don't necessarily see him do it, but he pulls out a sack of coins and hands it to you. Our, our friend Davy in here? Yes. Cool. So each one of you is also 10 gold richer. So what's between gold and silver? Uh, Electrum, which uh, no one really uses. I use it to troll people. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so 36 divided by 4 is a number I can't do without a calculator. 9 silver. Nine. I said... Oh yeah, sorry. So yeah, everyone had 9 silver. Is that the triangle, or...? Uh, Second yeah. one, yeah. I, I deducted the three, three gold and six, so uh, five plus nine is fourteen. <clears throat> is it? Is it not? Five plus nine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> yeah, everyone got paid, is everyone happy? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Like I said at the time, I never intended to keep it to myself. Anyway, so are we officially wrapping up? Do we need to do it? Do we need to do something like, okay, going to bed now? What was the afternoon? Or are we just, we're just, we're just it? pausing? Oh. Next session. I'll decide whether or not it's gonna. We'll continue on the same day, or we may move on to the next day. Who knows? Sure, we'll leave it up to the system. Yeah, oh, we've got we got no plans right now. Job's done. Let's just hang out until the merchant shows up and gives us a job. Sure, that was our only reason for being here. <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that dinner. We have to pay for dinner. Goblins. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Yeah, actually, actually, goblin, goblin hands are a delicacy here. I'm gonna sit over <laughs> here. These look like comfortable chairs. Oh yeah, that's nice. I guess I'm just I'm fine at the table. There a little linger by the stairs. <laughs> oh, actually, is there a bath or shower in the building? He tells you that the bed chambers have uh, uh, pots of water that they heat up. Too, so you can like wipe yourself off. 
They don't have uh, any like beds, or they don't have like a bathtub or anything. That'll that'll do. As yeah. as as the lady of the group, I would like access to a chamber, please. I I already oh. asked for digitization on myself. Now she's a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that press the digitation. Would it work on yourself? Don't you occupy more than one cubic foot of space? Yes, but your clo the clothes itself does not. Yeah, but he's still he there. Off. <laughs> yeah, but like he, he himself is still dirty, right? Yeah. Here, yeah, it's oh. just his clothes. Can you can you flavor your clothes too? I mean, let's see why not. <laughs> so, uh, this, uh, I, don't, I don't know. This is just like a catch-all kind of spell. Yeah, it's just, you know, minor trinkets and small things to do. Instantly clean or soil an object. Yeah. So you can get into prestidigitation more with uh, zero and keep soiling his clothing. You can make someone else shit their pants. <laughs> with your own shit. I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna leave my character on the stairs to imply I went upstairs to a chamber. Alright, well. And we're done. I guess that's a wrap. Wrap yeah. for the day. Uh, yeah, I had a good time. <clears throat> I feel like more fun than uh, <laughs> the character created day. <laughs> it was a uh, comedy of errors because it had been literal years since I had used Roll20 as a DM. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, appreciate you doing the brunt of all the work. Yeah. Good guy there. Setting everything up so that I can screw it up. <laughs> a lot more work with this. limit to how many people is like a min and max of how many people you should have for this campaign no it's up to the dm's preference if more hmm, people what if we join had up. like 50 <laughs> players i would need more than one <laughs> dm <laughs> <laughs> well you talked about, what was it called a pathfinder thing that you talked about before yeah, so there's actually another rule system called Pathfinder, which is more of a crunchy rule system than this. Um, actually, there's also organized play with uh, with both D and D Fifth Edition and Pathfinder, uh, which you could play a campaign. It's supposed to be like you're supposed to basically get like a homogenized game system uh, game um, for one adventure. Like they'd play the same thing, and if you play that one, you could kind of get the same type of story. Uh, and then you'd be able to bring your character to a different table and play the same type of thing. Where'd the map go? Oh, we're safe. I was gonna write safe on the ground. <clears throat> but the map's gone. Where did the map go? What the fuck? What <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Right, that's a wrap. I do. Yeah. I mean, they still have some of the fucking head stuff. Like did I have writing. I read, I read safe. Yeah, but how did you get to a different page? I didn't even move you. I didn't. I started writing safe on the ground. I guess Rob yeah. has teleported himself to a different plane of existence. What? Oh, where's my safe? <clears throat> that was weird. I'm not gonna write. Apparently, it destroys reality if I write. <laughs> Some high level magic <laughs> accidentally tapped into. <laughs> Because I deleted the first map and it just kind of defaulted you on map three, which oh, is okay. the map that you guys were on. Okay. That's what I'm going to assume is ha what happened. Oh, yeah, it works now. I'm going to do it again. It's too hard to write with a mouse. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
can I read this book? Can she use the Pathfinder because that rule set's a little bit more on the difficult side? Mm. Well, I only bring it up because you mentioned it before. Like, if there were a lot of people playing, you could do like separate, small camp cam campaigns. That's uh, called a West March game. How a West March game? Oh, is, okay. Sorry. Is that in essence, it's a giant campaign with like multiple people and players. And if the if it's a small group, you can kind of get away with one DM. But in essence, how it would work is that uh, you would say, I want to go explore that cave in the north. Or, like, I want to go see what's uh, inside those woods over there. And the DM would say, okay, well, bring a couple people with you. Uh, and who do you want to bring? And so you'd say, okay, I want to bring, like, um, Rana, who's a tank, and Yol, who plays, like, a ranger, and... Um, like zero who would be like a water genasi things that you would think that would be useful there and then you all pick a day that works everyone and then you just go do that thing yeah that's a cool it's, idea it's called a west march game and they're really neat i've never actually run one but i played in one for a little while before uh real life obligations got in the way and it was actually really fun usually there's like some epic climactic story fight um, yeah. the one that I had been a part of the epic clinic, uh, the story fight would have been uh, basically how it worked was that there just appeared a floating island off in the distance and we were exploring it and the final fight was against a ancient red dracolich dude you could do Eureka as a West Marsh campaign yeah you could <laughs> <laughs> It'd have to be like Eureka would need to be much bigger, but that's in essence what it is. Like, other than the Warrior of Light, the other ones just kind of go and explore their.